uh, in terms of the season, the frosting might be different, but the cake would be the same. Now some are worried about the cake. Are you? I, I think one thing we have to look at is that the protocols um, are working for uh, 29 of the 30 teams, um, and it allows for 870 players, uh, nearly 150 coaches, 65 umpires. They've all worked for a week, and we've really had, uh, with the exception of one club, uh, no no outbreaks. It's been rather amazing that you've had no positive tests, and I think everyone anticipated positive tests. Um, so it really allows for the protocol to be examined as to one specific team, uh, their conduct and review, knowing that the protocol works league-wide everywhere else. So I would suggest that that we've really got something here that is allows for a very consistent operation. Uh, it also allows for, um, uh, if the protocol is religiously followed, that uh, we now know that it's functional. Right. Manfred did say um, he was asked what it would take to shut down a team or a portion of the schedule. He, he said uh, whether it would be if you lost a number of players where it rendered it completely non-competitive. It sounds like you don't think we're going to go that far. Well, we, again, we have a, uh, the ability to do two things that clubs can make adjustments where they've got um, we have a 60 man uh, system that is available for play. Um, and certainly it can accommodate uh, if needed uh, for the, at the talent aspect. We also have the normal fluctuation of talent uh, where clubs are transacting and you can pick up additional players. But I, I think the one thing that's clear is that this is somewhat of an anomalous situation. Uh, we've got a, uh, a protocol that, uh, again, for for every other club in the league that has worked and worked effectively almost to to the level where there is no positives. And uh, and we also have, we now know that a, a club that played against the club um, that uh, had an infection, that because of the social distancing nature of baseball, that did not transfer a transfer to the opposition team. And um, mm. I, I think we, we also are really um, quite clear that the players that have been infected, uh, the symptomology has been very mild. There's been no hospitalizations. So in this, certainly in this age group, we, we're seeing that, that for those who have uh, uh, contracted the virus, that um, it has not created a, uh, a severe medical situation for those players to date. So, Scott, are, are you hearing anything from the players themselves in the wake of these reports, any additional concerns? Or are they also just saying, hey, we're fine, we're going to keep, we should just keep doing things as we have been doing? Or do they want more assurances, different practices, standardization uh, across clubs? I think this incident is that, you know, baseball players are, are really starving to play baseball. They, they, they miss the game. Uh, they have it back now. And, and this is very much a wake-up call about the seriousness of the protocols and the necessity of it. Uh, we have a system where the players are very are operating very efficiently. They're reporting any symptomology early. They're not going in if they if they uh, feel um, uh, in any way uh, any of the any symptoms at all. So I, I think the, uh, the the privilege of the game in this, viral context is something that players are even more aware of the importance of of both for their teammates competitiveness and their goals in the game to to really take a very uh, strict uh, operational plan to follow all the protocols. Scott, Julia Borston here. I've been following the ratings increases of some of the games so far this season. And, you know, there are record ratings for the opening night game, 4 million viewers. Do you think that even without players in stands, and there's been some back and forth about whether people prefer the cardboard cutouts or the virtual fans, do you think there's a chance to hold on to those viewers even when other sports return? Well, I, I think obviously it was always going to be an issue that when you had the NBA playoffs ongoing with, um, you know, the uh, initial aspects of the baseball playoffs, that um, that's going to be a, a competitive measure that baseball normally doesn't uh, 
um, interact with. But uh, apart from that, uh, I think w one of the things that we all knew is that, and we wish we could have done this much earlier because the fan base was there, the interest was there, the audience where we're having record numbers because fans want to see fresh content. They, they don't want to see reruns. Uh, baseball offers them something that is truly the norm of what they're used to seeing when they when they turn on their televisions. And so the, the normalcy aspect, the desire to watch the game, and, and the new new fans that are watching the game are all very important to baseball and, and very positive signs about, you know, um, where in this environment, what opportunities there are to, to advance the game. Right. Now, now, fans are being asked to process a lot, uh, the protocols and Joe Kelly and everything else. Um, Scott, we love hearing from you. It helps us a lot understand uh, what's happening in, in the sport. Uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, Carl. Julia.